If we have an immune process that's happening that's trying to protect us, why would we use something that slows the immune process? Well, it's pretty simple. Let me show you. Okay, so corticosteroids in sepsis. So how does this occur? Well, very simply put, when it comes to the physiology, remember when we have bacteria that attaches itself to cells like so, it's going to release an endotoxin or exotoxins. And these toxins are going to essentially reach the immune cells, the mast cells on the vessels, and those mast cells are gonna create an immune response. And when we have an infection that's all over, not just in a cut like that where this does happen, but just in one tiny area, when we have sepsis, it's happening everywhere. So this whole process of vessel dilation in the immune process, this is not just happening in a small area, it's happening widespread, immune or system, system wide. So what that happens here is that means that we're gonna have fluid shift outside the vessels in order to fight this infection and get our immune cells over here to fight this infection. Here's the problem though, is that if this is happening all over the body, we are actually decreasing the amount of fluid available inside the vessels for transport and, and movement. And so we're basically leading towards shock and further shock. So what we're gonna do is we may use corticosteroids in this particular situation because what corticosteroids are gonna do is essentially stunt the immune process. It's going to decrease the amount of reaction that our mast cells are gonna have and ultimately allow for a decrease in vessel dilation, keeping some fluid still inside the vessel so that way we don't further dist um, distribute ourselves to the point where we can no longer maintain our perfusion in this particular situation. So that's why we use corticosteroids in sepsis.